What's up guys? I'm at Pool City in Guadalajara, Mexico. That's right, in the beautiful state of Jalisco, Mexico. Right across from the football stadium. Or as in America we say, soccer. Right across the street is this pool hall and it's the only dedicated pool hall. Most of your billiard places have three cushion billiards featured. But this has no three cushion billiards, only pool tables. There's Nacho Ignacio, the owner. Right there. So uh, now we'll go in. I think I want to get some tacos. Maybe we'll get some tacos here in a minute. Okay. Tacos look, I'm sure it's amazing there, but one of the workers at the pool hall recommended I go across the street, around the corner, and across the street to Tacos Los Volcanes. Volcanes. And the smoke is coming out. Let's check it out. Buenas tardes. Tengo hambre. It's okay. Okay. Bonito. Wow. Mande? Okay, gracias. Hola. Here we go over here. Alright, let's go put the toppings on. Nice salsa spread. Más bonito salsa todo el mundo. Los bacanes. Wow, that's amazing. I don't know if I can eat all this. Those are huge tacos. I'm going to try my best to eat these huge tacos. Usually, three tacos isn't that much, but you could probably make eight or nine tacos with all the meat in there and it's the best salsa spread I've ever seen anywhere in Mexico well guys I killed that oh my god these guys make some amazing tacos they're huge I ate all three of them now that I had those, I think I could have more because they're so good, but I'm not going to do it. Time to play some pool. Muy okay, bueno, gracias. Those fantastico, amigos, gracias. Delicioso, oh my God. Okay guys, here we go. I just broke the balls. I'm playing a fun set with this Local player David Aguilera almost made a nice mass A shot and left me with this opportunity to make a carom on the nine. All right, now, now I'm up one nothing. We're just playing for fun, a race of seven. These tables are really, really fast. Real tricky to play on, especially when you're fresh on a table. 
They're nine feet tables. Okay. Now I did play in a tournament here the previous Thursday night. Nice shot by David. David. And I was able to win the tournament. It was eight ball. They have it every Thursday if you're ever in Guadalajara. Now the music is real loud. Uh, it's a fun place. It's, it's mainly a bar with, with nice nine foot pool tables. The tables could be fixed up a little bit, more, a little more level and um, a little bit slower cloth would be nice. And for me, if the music was turned down a little bit, but it's a real fun place, real nice people, and a lot of pretty good pool players. A lot of the best pool players actually in Guadalajara go here on, on Thursday nights and uh, other nights during the week. Okay, nine ball down. Okay, we're going to me having ball in hand. Give, give myself a nice angle here. I stayed under that four, I just didn't want to mess with uh, coming up above it. I'm still getting used to the table. Table rolls off a little bit here and there and it's real fast. Rails play a little funny. Now here I'm trying to get out a little bit more to the left to get straight in on this seven. As it is, I cut it in and it's a nice natural position to come around three rails for the eight ball. I could have drawn that to the bottom rail and back straight up for the nine, shoot the nine in the other corner, but it was a natural shot just to come around three rails and play the nine right there. Okay, another chance starting from the two. I hear him straight in on the three, so I elect to draw back with a little bit of spin, shoot the four in the side, came a little bit too far. So now what you like to do here is draw it to the end rail and back out, but you put left so that you hit that second rail and come on a line towards the five. I could have had a little more left or a little more draw and be straight in on this five. That way all I'd have to do is a stop shot on that six ball. But it's easy enough just to float this in, go to the rail, come back out, pretty much in the same place. And here again, the tables are playing real fast, so you gotta be careful not to overdraw, which I do a little bit right there, so. But here it's pretty easy, just pump that eight ball in, pull over to the rail with the cue ball out, and come back straight out for the nine ball straight in. And another game. Okay, what happened there? I ended up with ball in hand. I'm just showing you the highlights here for the sake of time. Keep a nice angle above the two, come out one rail for the three. I, barely, I mean for the seven, sorry. Like I said, I ended up with a little more angle than I anticipated. And I believe I wanted to hit that third rail and be closer to straight in. Instead of trying to go around the table, I ended up just float it in real soft and take your cut on the nine. Especially when you're still trying to get used to the table. Okay, I don't know what happened in that game, but I wanted to show that real nice shot by David to slice that six ball in. Very nicely done. Okay, now here I'm coming across two rails. For the seven ball. And I'm not quite straight in, so it, but it's a nice shot to just float up, go straight down the table with top. And I barely got to where I can easily manage this, this cut shot. And the smart thing to do is just go up and down the table there because it's so thin. Instead of trying to baby it in, just go up and down the table. And here I'm using the inside on the nine ball to avoid the scratch in, in the corner pocket over there. Get that one a little thin. Now I'm negotiating a game with the gentleman on the left. His name is Ango. And we decided to play for 100. 100 pesos, that is, which is five American dollars. Something to do. A little sweat bet. Make some uh, taxi money. Oh, scratch on the break. Oh, and he's going to take advantage of that with a nine ball combination. And he's up, one nothing. Breaks the balls. Looks like he made one. 
Oh, but missed that two ball. And now here's my first chance to open my account and get on the scoreboard here. Now I'm trying to give you guys as much value as possible, but I was really tempted to play the soundtrack without commentary because the, the rock and roll in this bar was so good. Even though it's real loud, it, uh, it's a real nice soundtrack. Okay, now six ball being on the rail. See how the cue ball came so easily across the table? That's because I hit the rail a little bit before the six, and that makes the cue ball go outwards across the table very fast because it hits the rail first and then the six. It's a totally different angle than if you hit the six ball slightly before the rail. When you do that, you can hold the cue ball and stop it from going very fast across the table. Now here I end up with a a thin cut again on the eight, and I did that to avoid getting snookered on the nine. And here you just want to control the direction of the cue ball. Like I'm not just going to float this in and give myself a chance to scratch in the side pocket if I can help it. So I put it, put low left on that on that cue ball so I don't scratch. Okay, decent break. Got a shot on the two. Made the one. A little bit of an angle, so I can just punch over to the rail and get you know, pretty much straight in on this three. Get the table going fast, came out a little bit further than I want. So what made the most sense right here is just float down, shoot the four in the side. And here I'm trying to draw off the rail and get straight in on the five, but I'm snookered behind the eight. So I'd have to jump over the edge of that eight to make the five, or I could play this nine ball carom shot, a very thin carom. You just gotta really line up to hit it thin, and you'll be surprised at how many caroms you can make. Just put a lot of effort into getting that cue ball down the tangent line. Okay, uh, again, I made a ball, and I got a shot on the lowest ball, the one ball here. I think I was trying to go under the four, hit the four, and just stop using the four as a blocker for that for that two-five combo, unless the two ball went in, but I had to kick it, and it turned out good. Pretty good position. Now I could cut the three in, or I could bank it, and follow to the rail, and back over towards my shot on the four ball. And that worked out good with this particular angle. Because I didn't have to worry about a double kiss. Now here I could use high right and go two rails for the six. That's making my spin do a little too much work with this exact angle. So I could use high left, shoot the six in either corner actually. And I kind of ended up on the 50 yard line, as they say. And I shoot the six over in that pocket so I can avoid hitting the nine ball. I made a good shot and I ended up bumping the eight, but it worked out in my favor. Simple zigzag shot across the table with another chance to win the game. Pretty good chance to win the game. Okay, six ball down, and look at this, nice shot on the one in the corner. I could hit rail, I could go to the rail with low right and just come out towards the two, or I could come under here, like that, zigzag across, more into the line of position on the two. Plus that nine being where it is, makes for a bad two rail shot to get shape on a three, so this way I was able to avoid bumping into anything. on the right side of the three. Now that five goes in the side, so all I have to do is, I could float it in like that, or I could try to go across the table, but I could see I had, it was full enough to where I could 
slow roll it and have a good angle on that five to come off the rail. Now the straight follow shot takes me directly into that eight. So I only hit it a little bit above center and stun it forward down for position, avoiding running into that eight ball. And here you could go forward with high, high or high left, or you could just draw it back like that. It's your option. And here I'm actually putting the butt of the cue on the table and just pinching the cue up with my fingers and then sliding the cue on the table into the cue ball, a shot that Mike Massey made famous. And on that you can actually get draw if you just don't pinch the tip up high and then you stroke your hand into the butt of the cue, you can actually draw full length table draws. Now here is a safety shot. I'm trying to get the cue ball frozen on the nine. That's almost like a three cushion billiard shot. Came a little too far, but I have a nice wall of blockers right there for me, so pretty decent window for safety play. Now he needs some left spin, which he did put on, but he needed just a little bit more left spin, maybe hit it softer. The tough thing about this shot, even though I have ball in hand, the two ball only goes up in that upper left hand corner or in the side, but the nine is blocking my easy position for the side pocket. So I'm just gonna take ball in hand and use the rail as a as a reference, a speed reference, as I've heard some commentators say. Ended up pretty good to where all I have to do is float, float just past the three. Now the thing is here though that four doesn't easily go because of the eight and the seven is in my position route off the three. I'm, I'm trying to play a carom off the seven. And I might have been drawn back for this combo, um, seeing how hard I hit it, and I could see how full I was going into that seven. Because the eight ball is slightly off, slightly off the rail, it makes this a pretty big combo shot. You just have to hit it reasonably close. If that ball is frozen on the rail, the eight ball, then the shot is a lot tougher. Now the zigzag was good because the seven was blocking my easy one rail position straight on the line towards the five, and the nine was blocking my two, three rail position. So the zigzag was good, and there instead of trying to be cute with low right and come right towards the seven, just straight top guaranteed the shot. Even though I'm further away from the seven, it was more of a guarantee to pocket that ball with the five. And then here just to float off the seven forward instead of drawing it on real fast cloth table conditions that you're not quite yet used to. Just play the follow. There we go, we got the set. A lot of fun, thank you Angel. And here's David. We're discussing the, the games. And uh, he'll play you if you show up to Pool City. Real friendly staff over there. It's right next to the football stadium. So be sure to check it out if you're in Guadalajara and you'll have a good time. Thursday night is when they have the pool tournament and I was able to win. It was an eight ball tournament. I had to go to one more game than, than the rest of the players. So I had to go to three. The other players had to go to two, which made it pretty tough because a lot of them can play pretty good. And um, so I had to fight hard to win the tournament and come with some good shots. It was a lot of fun. And there's Nacho. He was kind enough to gift me a beautiful bottle of tequila right there. And then the Misfit shirt is Cesar, who drove me around to a few places. Real cool guy in Guadalajara, good pool player. Thanks a lot, a lot of great people and really good players in Guadalajara, friendly. Had a great time at Pool City. Would we'll definitely go back. So. Hey guys, thanks for watching to the end and be sure to subscribe, like the video, check out ProPoolAcademy.com and sign up, become a member and check out MaxEberly.com to order my DVDs and books and stay tuned for the next video. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time. Take your pool game to the next level with my online membership course, ProPoolAcademy.com. There's over 33 hours of game knowledge with 16 modules, 140 video lesson sections and thousands of pool tips with more being added every month. To sign up and to order my books and DVDs in the mail, click the links in the description below this video now.